So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra Kay, and I'm sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat, Sadiq. And it is Tuesday, the Demetra Kay podcast, where we talk about Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people, but we can always do better. And I'd like to say before we get started that we have a cash app, Venmo, PayPal, and Super Chat. You become a member. There's several ways that you can donate to the channel to help this channel keep flourishing and all of that. But at the very least, like the video, right? I mean, damn, you here. We about to, you know, let y'all know what's up and all of that. So at least you can do is just press the like button. So I love and appreciate you. Well, that's at your wedding. Just send me an invitation. Now, Donovan does not know what we are going to be talking about because I specifically kept this from him because I want his natural, raw, uncut and unfiltered reaction to this. And so you guys are also going to know about it when Donovan knows about it. But before we get started, Donovan, what say you? Well, you know, not only can you like, share and subscribe, you could also become a member so that you get all the latest information and get an earlier uh, notification when Demetrius putting up those really great videos. And by the way, you put up last week some really, really informative videos and something for people to think about. But also, do not forget to join us on Sundays, 3 p.m. Cent- uh, Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time for the Demetri K Show. And the great thing about that show, unlike any other shows that are out there that I've seen so far, you are a co-host and we get your opinions and we talk to you live and we read uh, what you're saying right on the screen. So, Demetra, what is this surprise that I need to ready? to? I'm ready. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay, I've got you. So give me one second. It isn't that video that I didn't want to get out, is it? No, I don't I don't have access to that yet. Okay, good, good. Only $19.99 <laughs> a month. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show it to you, then I will explain it to you. Well, maybe this will explain it. So here we go. Hmm. So far, so good, right? So far, so good. Okay, here we go. Okay. Oh, Cinder Mac. Do y'all really just be coming on the internet without knowing how to do a simple Google search. I'm a state senator, baby girl. The United States got nothing to do with me. She ain't got nothing to do with me. Please do not hop on to the internet in 2022 as if the insurrection did not happen. Go talk to an insurrectionist. Go talk to y'all's old president. Don't come to me with this nonsense. Like, please. I don't know why I'm justifying this with a response, but LOL. I literally won my election 60% to 40%. I'm looking to get reelected. Bye. I believe the word that you meant to use was reelected. It won't get me reelected. Um, and it probably will because my constituents freaking love that I'm a real person and fun and, you know, not a robot. Honey, baby. This ain't it because I am I have an Ivy League degree and I'm a sitting state senator. It's not about what I'm wearing, it's not about what I'm doing. They won't respect me regardless. Reg- this is tacky. This is lazy. What big girl? Big girl. No. Okay. Okay. All right. I, you know what? At first, I thought it was Deanna. At first, <laughs> <laughs> twerking it up on the beach and stuff like that. Okay. Right now, I I almost guarantee you, Demetra, you want my opinion on that video, right? Yes. All right. Let me break this down for you guys that are listening. I had no problem with what she was doing. You want to know why? House of Representatives. Even though she's a state senator, same thing. It's the same assembly or whatever the deal is. It's a representation of ordinary people. So if that is her personality, and she seems fairly young in the video, um, and that's her personality, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's all these old heads that want to be all conservative and stuff, but these are the ones having the wild orgies and stuff in the 70s and smoking all the weed and stuff, and now they want to put their morality on her. I absolutely... Looking at that woman, she's probably about in her early 30s from from what I could see. 
I could be wrong. She might be older. But the point is, she's expressing herself. She didn't break a law. She has every right to do that. Now, it would be up to her constituents, the people that can vote for her, if that would be acceptable to represent themselves. But I saw absolutely nothing wrong, especially in the age demographic that I think she is in, in what she was doing. She's at the beach on her own time. She's enjoying herself. And if that's how she expresses herself, that's how she expresses herself. Uh, when you see uh, Sheila Jackson Lee doing the old Harriet Tubman, nobody has a problem with that. I didn't think that was appropriate when black people are being shot down in the street. There was absolutely nothing wrong with that video. I applaud that woman. And you know what? She's absolutely right. She can get more votes from black men and men in general because of that video. Well, for those of you guys who don't know who that is, that is Senator Tierra Mack from Rhode Island. Uh, she was elected in 2021 and is seeking re-election, I guess. I don't know if it was a special election or whatever that she uh, went through. She is a Democrat and she is also the first open LGBTQ representative, I guess, from um, Rhode Island. And so, yeah, it looks like she was on holiday, if you will, for the 4th of July in uh, Rhode Island, I guess, on the beach. And as you all saw there, she was standing on her head twerking. Now, Donovan, I, this is where I guess we're going to have to bump heads because I actually see this a lot differently than you do. So she is 28 years old, fairly young. And some people will say, yeah, that's what 28, well, some 28-year-olds do, right? Not all, but some. That's what they do, right? She's young. She's having fun. She's on the beach. However, she's also a senator. And I just feel like she's supposed to, they call them dignitaries, right? Where is the dignity in putting your behind and doing that on to Twitter or the internet or TikTok or wherever it was? Where, where is the dignity in doing that? And so... For her to try to, you know, clap back, if you will, at people saying, hey, you know, you kind of set us back. Now, I don't know about her setting us back, but I just definitely think because there's not a lot of senators, especially female senators, black female senators. In Rhode know, Island. In Rhode Island. Yeah. And then you <laughs> feel like that's what you need to be doing is like, why? why? Like, why are you doing that? And, I, you know, I'm old school. I'm 51. You know, and I just I come from the old school of things should be done decently in an order. Everybody ain't got to see all your business. You know, now I've taken a, a picture on the beach in a bathing suit, but it was nothing like that. You know, it was to illustrate that I had one on. I hadn't had one in a long time at the DR, whatever. But as far as standing on my head and and, and jiggling my booty, I, and my other thing is, did she think she wasn't going to get any backlash for that? Right. Right. I buy that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, but, you know, you know, again, we are being phased out. Our generation, Generation X, as you know, uh, leadership completely will pass over us. In most cases, leadership will pass over. It's going to our children's. And that woman is about your daughter's age, in equivalent to it. And this is how they do their thing. I'm not saying it's right. Like I said, I, you know, it's a different era and we have to let this stuff go. If this country is headed to ratchetness city, that's where it's headed to. If that's, if that's where it's going. But the thing is, even though we didn't get our time as leaders and, you know, to cultivate the country as Generation Xers, it is what it is. If this is where, where they're leading us, hey, we got our pensions, we got our money, we going to be all right. But I don't think... Uh, like the problem that we're having with our baby boomer generation. They don't want to leave, so we can't leave. But yet they're holding down the same things that they did when they first took power and they don't want to change anything. Things must change if you like it or not. And that's the way it is. And we, you know, people need to accept that. Simple as that. So she also brought up the insurrection, basically saying, y'all talking to me about, you know, twerking on the beach, but we had a whole insurrection. And I want to know this. Why is it the Democrats go to when they're being called to the carpet to bring up the insurrection? Like that's the, you know, the answer for everything. When you try to call me to the carpet, then I'm going to just dig in my bag and bring up my Trump card, no pun intended, and <laughs> put that on the table and bring up the insurrection. So my thing is, though, you know, like, did you really think you weren't going to get any backlash? And then why are you mad that you did when you think of a senator? Or somebody in a position like that, you don't ever think of them 
doing that kind of stuff. Now, we did have Maxine Waters say, oh, the audacity of WAP when she was talking to Megan Thee Stallion, saying that she liked the song and you guys don't know who WAP is. It's a very disgusting Wait, wasn't song. Maxine at the BET Awards twerking with Lizzo? I don't know. She was twerking. I, I don't know. <laughs> she might. I don't know. But, <laughs> but, you know, I remember having a conversation with my father. And he says, you know, because my father's 78. He said there was a time where uh, black women didn't act all like that was some here and there. Yeah. But you, you would never even dream of seeing black women undressed and doing the things that they're doing back then. Right. It was like one mm -hmm. or two. Even when we was going to school, we had we knew one girl or two in the high school that maybe was a little loose or fast or whatever the case was. Mm -hmm. She liked the boys a lot. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing and hearing a lot about our women and I'm mad that this is normal. If we're coming, yeah. like, y'all tell me, is this normal? Normalized. Is this the new norm? I'm mad that that's become normalized, that our women are getting undressed and doing those types of things and then getting mad because somebody says, well, hey, you're a senator. You shouldn't be acting like that. I agree. Right. We are. I'm not a Rhode Island, but they are sending her to Washington to help. No, no, no. She's a state senator. She's a state senator. Well, so she's going to the senator. Capitol. So, yeah. So the state that, that that makes sense. Okay, so she's at the state. They're uh, sending her to the state to affect change statewide. You know, and, uh, make legislation that's going to benefit them. And she's busting it open at the beach. So I mean, wait a minute. I, I, I'm confused. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You are confused about this, and we, me, and you've been arguing on this show for years about whole. I. I'm, I'm the main one saying we need to hold these sisters accountable and, you know, and, and get them right and get them straight. Right. The first thing come out of Demetra K's mouth is why you keep talking up under these women clothes. If they want to walk out naked, they should be able to do that without being accosted and all that uh, other good I, I stuff. Said right? accosted, I said accosted. Like right, a woman right. should be able to walk outside naked without okay. some man touching her. Right. OK. So by that same logic, why can't she be on holiday in an unofficial capacity, even though when you're a senator, you're constantly a senator? Uh, and enjoying herself what young people do. Because how many, I guarantee you, I can show you hundreds of videos down in Miami, uh, the DR, Puerto Rico, you name it, whatever beach there is, Las Vegas, where you got girls in her demographic that are doing the exact same thing. So do you think a first lady should be able to, I mean, she could, people could, they have the right, let's get that out of the way, they have the right to do what they want. But would you look at the first lady of a church if she, this TD Jake's wife, I know they old, so I'm just using mm -hmm. her for example. What if she did something like that? Well, a lot of first ladies of the church are, th are old 304s. But what if they did it all up on the internet, though, like that? They're old 304s. You can't stop what you're, you're used to doing. No, but I guess the point that I'm making is when, like, in every, in every community everywhere, there's people who are considered dignified, right? And I think mm -hmm. a senator, to some degree, sure. is sure. dignified. And so... Where do we draw the line and say, because, you know, I talk about it all the time. There's things that I could do on here I ain't going to do, but I'm not. And, and, you know what? And if you did do them, our viewership would go out the roof. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Right. I won't do it. But the point that I'm making is, where do you go from there? After you, yeah. woo, and woo, you know, you bust it all up and show it everybody. Where do you go from there? Like, people aren't going to. If let's say I did that, people aren't going to come over here to listen to what I got to say. Mm -hmm. You know, I do that and one day I come and I got a turtleneck, you know, all the way up to here. Now we're going to talk about black power. They're going to be like, man, please. We had it why we here. Well you, 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 well, you know what? You, you bring up a good point because let's go back to Maxine this Waters. Let's go back. This, this ain't beer. Let, yeah, let, let's go back to Maxine Waters. Let's go back to Sheila Jackson Lee. Let's go back to Karen Bass and what all, all these other people that sold their souls and don't give a shit about black people, right? Just think when those people finally do get carried out in a pine box, there won't be anybody that looks like them or have the same gender of them that will occupy that seat because they have ran that seat and their reputations into the ground. So I, you know what? So you bring up a good point in regards to keeping a standard. Yeah, I mean, and then my thing is, did you have to do that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Did you have to do that? Like what? I get it. You're having fun. And 28 maybe, years old. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe you did it and you took a picture, but you posted it. You know, like how are we supposed to see you as that dignitary 
and you're putting those type of images out and then you mad at people for calling you to the carpet and then to that point donovan about you saying holding women accountable sounds like some people were trying to hold her accountable and she wasn't listening to us so it's like well so if you're not going to listen to what we're saying as constituents i don't know if they were constituents right. but say if we re-elect you that you're going to go and listen to what we have to say because that's what you're supposed to do right is listen to what the voters have to say and why they sent you there but if she can't take feedback then i, I think that's um very telling but i don't think the people were wrong for saying hey wait a minute now yeah you we're we looking up to you as a senator well, and yeah absolutely especially if that's her constituents like i said she's supposed to be accountable to the people who put her into office because i would be appalled if i saw any senator any senator in any capacity or any congressman in any capacity go up to the state house maybe they lost a vote and then they start twerking because they don't like the way the vote went and sticking their tongues out ah! you know that's not the adult way to uh to deal with it so yeah there, there should be some standards and accountability to that but it seems to me this generation that is out there right now because we have let this shit go on for so long it has now cremated into other aspects of our diaspora. Yeah, I mean, and I, like I said, I'm mad that this is being looked at as normal. It's not mm -hmm. normal. I think we should expect our women in, you know, dignified places at the very least to behave dignified. I personally don't want to see black well i don't want to see black women do a period but th that's not going to happen so i definitely don't want to see black women who are supposed to be you know somebody and have some leaders support. of the community right yeah I, I i don't want to see them do that and i don't want to hear them try to justify why it is okay and i'm gonna just go out there and say it's not okay like black women have enough to deal with and i know that she doesn't represent all black women mm -hmm. But we have enough to deal with uh, other than trying to answer and explain to that because we also know that black women have always been over sexualized since we got over here on the from the time we got on uh, those ships to the middle passage to right now today and so i don't like that we continue as black women not all of a sudden further that narrative that we're nothing but playthings and sex bots and you know, we all up under our clothes and all we all about is our big behinds wiggling all over the place. And that doesn't help that we also put that narrative out there, right? So yeah. I'm not saying that white supremacy should be able to do it, anybody else should be able to do it, but it sure doesn't make a compelling argument when we have our senators now out there twerking something. It's crazy. Exactly. I re remember when uh, Malaya was caught like at a party or something and she was doing something, all, oh, yeah. you know, and and um, even the Bush girls, they were doing something around a party, drinking or whatever. These are girls that are the uh, daughters of the president, kids of the president. They have a standard that they have to uphold because of, you know, the position that they occupy or their father occupies. I remember when I was in the military as a dependent, um, I had to adhere to a certain standard to what my parents' ranks were and stuff like that because, you know, they weren't going to have that living over in Japan and you're acting an ass. You know, they're, they're going to handle that real, real quick. So I can understand that aspect in how we do it. But we've been saying for years to hold a black woman accountable, even in, in the simplest forms of things. It's damn near impossible, Demetra. It's damn near impossible. They will not take the L. They will not admit when they're wrong. And I'm not saying all of them. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. And it, it's, it's a shame that we've gotten to this point to where they, you know, them and some of these beta males can't admit when they're wrong. Well, and like you said, it's not all black women. There's a lot of black women who can't take correction yeah. and, uh, you know, be held accountable. Uh, but then there's some that cannot uh, be, that don't want to be held accountable. But mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, I mean, I have a niece. She's really into black female, you know, prominent figures. You know, she does research on them and stuff. And so I think about somebody like my niece. What if we lived in Rhode Island and she, you know, uh, Tierra Mack, that's her name, happened to be her senator. And she goes, does some research on her. And then she sees this video of her twerking. What is like, so, you know, what is she supposed to take from that? You know, because whether we like it or not, people like her. She's a senator. Somebody looks up to her. She's young. Sure. She, so got, she, she got elected. So obviously some people voted her in. 
Yeah, and I'm sure there's women in her age group that say, oh, wow, I like Tiara. You know, she, this, this, that, and the other. And, you know, girls, my niece's age, who's 14, 15, she's 15, 15 she's years old. Damn. 15, yeah, 15 years old. So what what is she supposed to take from that? You know, can she? can these little girls at least learn that you should be considered on your merits and not your behind? Or how about that? There's a time and a place for everything. Yeah, I mean, what like so? What about the little girls? You know, I get it. I, you know, and this is what I hate too. I hate this argument from our sisters. I'm a grown woman. I can do what I want to do. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. but you not being a grown woman and doing what you want to do in the confines of your home. You're doing it so everybody else can see it. And listen, right. I know that as parents, we are supposed to be the role models for our children. However, that's not necessarily the case. But I think when somebody looks, thinks about a senator, the last thing they should be thinking about is her showing her black ass on TikTok and then getting mad because people are calling her to the carpet. See, but again, that goes back to you can't tell a black woman nothing. And I know that's a stereotype. Doesn't mean all women, but, you know, we know it's a stereotype. The loud black woman. Look at the movies. Big Mama, uh, Wanda, uh, you know. Shanene, all this stuff like that. It's a stereotype, but there's a little truth to the stereotype because there are women that act like that. They figure they can do whatever they want. And no matter how much harm that they don't see happening, it they don't care because it's all about how they feel, how they feel. And men have been saying this and, and uh, rest in peace, Kevin Samuels, you brought stuff like that up and was kind of bringing that to the forefront. And a lot of women are seeing this now. And it's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of shocked, Demetra K, for the simple fact that you, of all people, are now getting tired of the, the stuff that it goes on within our community that, that could be easily corrected. Well, I will say this. It's not that I've gotten tired. I've always been very outspoken about, um, you know, Black women. For I'm pro and I'm for and against you know, things that black women do because I'm a black woman, right? And mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm sitting up here as a, you know, a deity and that I'm perfect as far as black womanhood, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. But I've always called it out and said that there's things that we should be doing and things that we should be doing better as black women. We are the mother of civilization. We are the first teacher. And so, as my dad says, our children drink from us because we are our children's center of influence. And so if we are, the last thing we should be doing, I just in my opinion, maybe you a mama, sure. not y'all watching, but you know, some other mm -hmm. people, maybe you're a mama that twerks in front of the kids and you know, all that other stuff, and you don't mind doing it. But I was never that way, and I would never, my daughter's almost 30. Um, I, but I would never, you know, influence her to the point of her doing something and she, you know, would be looked at crazy or whatever the case is. But no, I've always said that we as black women could do a lot better. And I always say too, that I believe that, as you said, a lot of stereotypes are leveled onto black women and mm -hmm. that, and just even with her as an example, a lot of people like to lump all black women into Correct. Mm -hmm. control herself. The first thing she got to do, let some music come on. She bending over twerking and mm -hmm. like, you know, that's not all women because I can hear music and not think about bending over and twerking. I <laughs> know you're right. You're right. But no, uh, you know, you bring up really valid and good points because there's something that you said about seven minutes ago where black women used to. Well, and we keep forgetting this. We're trendsetters. We're doing all this other stuff. Right. Black people, when we set the trends, sisters, beautiful sisters. I mean, there's nothing better, in my opinion, than a sister, period. Black skin, you know hair, body, you know, even though American sisters are kind of uh, hybrids, but that's okay. You're still sisters. But remember this thing you used to say a while back? What happened to us being the standard? That's why a lot of us were home, uh, homemakers and uh, we were domestics. White people wanted Black women in the home as domestics because Black women set the trend of how a, a kids should conduct themselves and dress and do all those other little things. So give us an example because your grandparent was a domestic, correct? Yes, both of my grandmothers were domestics. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad's mother, uh, she was actually a nanny and a domestic for that of Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, uh, my mom's side, you know, she was a domestic for a very wealthy family and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but to your point about black women, 
we, I mean, I would say we are still the standard because there's yeah. other races of women who are chasing after what we Absolutely. have as far as our, how we look and our man, right? A lot of, you know, <laughs> yeah, don't forget, don't forget your man. <laughs> but, yeah, we used to be the standard bearer in that uh, white people, especially after slavery, you know, even in slavery, you know, we took care of the kids, uh, black women. We were always clean, our hair done. And, Good example, you know, color was, purple, Sophia. It, Yes, then you know, have her because she's like, hell no, I ain't gonna be watching your yeah. kids. But, but why did the white woman want her? Oh, yeah, your kids because she's so kids, clean. And, yeah, you know? but that's how it was, right? Because black women, like y'all know the story of the Moors. Hell, we taught white people how to wash their ass and all right, the other right. stuff, right? They, they wasn't, you know, some don't even wash their legs, even still, but mm -hmm. we, you know, we taught them that kind of stuff. And so black women were sought after for those domestic skills, if you will teaching them how to cook, telling them what Lowry's is and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so we <laughs> have ventured away from that. Now you go anywhere, and I'm not saying all black women, but y'all know what I'm talking about. You could go anywhere, particularly a Walmart, and see a sister at three o'clock in the afternoon with a bonnet on, pajamas, and hell, sometimes you see- And the her kids, kids with the not. sagging pants. But I'm telling you this, I'm starting to see men in yeah. black men with yeah. bonnets yeah. on. I've mm -hmm. seen black and men pajamas women. and pajamas. Yes. So that's not something that my mom did or my grandmothers did. They would not go outside in that manner. But that's what I said. I hate that some of this behavior that we are seeing from our sisters is being regarded as normal. It listen, it's not normal. What's normal is get up. And I'm not now I'm gonna say this to the mamas, okay? But let me don't let me forget this point about the mamas. Get up, clean yourself, exercise. What are you gonna do? Clean yourself, wash, you know, wash your body, comb your hair, put on some clothes. That's Fix your bed. Mind. Fix yeah, your damn that. bed. But I'm just saying, even just going outside, you know, I'm not saying you gotta go outside in a ball gown, but go outside looking like you got some sense. You you like. Like when I see women or anybody in the store with pajamas on, especially in the middle of the day or even in the morning, I'm like, you literally rolled out of bed, did not wash their ass or your face, and you grabbed your car keys and then you sloshed all the way across the house to the parking lot in the car, and then you sloshed your way out of the car in your house shoes all through the stove, and you went all around the stove getting what you needed. And then I also envision that with those same house shoes that you walked all the way across the store into the parking lot, you got in your car and then you tracked all that dirt into your house. And then you probably got your dirty ass back in the bed after you got your Zuzus and your Wham Whams for the day. So, I mean, I'm just saying like, what yeah. happened to it? And let me get back to the points about the mamas. Mamas, mamas, can I holler at you for a minute? Okay. As I said, I'm 51, so I might be some old battle axe at this point as far as y'all concerned why on earth are y'all sleeping to 10 11 12 and so are your babies y'all getting up like y'all ain't got a care in the world i remember when my mama was raising me and my siblings we had a routine especially you know if we went to school got up at a certain time mm -hmm. everybody was dressed my mama was dressed that was a routine. But these mamas nowadays, the kids ain't got no bedtimes. The kids is, you know, wild and disheveled. They eating at, you know, 12 o'clock, they first meal and they staying up all night. And like, what? Like, I, I, I'd love to see, especially our sisters who are out in public, they're dressed, the kids are dressed, the hair is calm. Like, I can't tell, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I've seen it in California too. I'm in Houston, so no yep. shade to y'all in Houston. But, there's not a time I don't drive down the street and I don't see a woman, a sister, with her hair all over her head. Now, I ain't talking about like me, like if I wear my Afro type of stuff. I'm talking about it's just like she just got up and maybe a body still mushed in some certain size. Yeah, it's just all over. And, you know, it's like you couldn't have brushed it. I'm not saying you had to curl it. Just brushing a little pony. Or at least with the baseball hat on. We can give you a pass with the baseball hat. I just like it. So maybe it's me because I'm one of those people. And Donovan, you know me a long time. I'm one of those people. I love, after I go I'm working out or whatever, I love coming home, showering, you know, the, putting lotion on, doing my hair, and 
you know, everything. I love getting dressed. I'm like, okay, what are we about to do today? Mm -hmm. But I could never imagine just rolling out the bed and going about my day with pajamas on all day. Okay. Uh, would you like an answer for that? Yes. I got an answer for you. When we were coming up and most people went to college or they got a job and they tried to make it in this, this beautiful thing. When you first start out, when you leave your parents' home, it's called the beautiful struggle. And the beautiful struggle is navigating this thing that we call life. Like the word life, I was going to go with the Prince song, but anyway, um, here's why, okay? Some women, because of the situations they made back in our day when we were younger, you know, you might want to go to the strip club, you know, and it was very few women that you knew really worked there. It was always either the fast chick or the chick that was kind of out there a little bit, you know, the one that you described earlier that was kind of like the boys really, really good. Yeah, she would end up at the strip club or walk in the streets and, you know, kind of went to that path, right? What do we have today? They have normalized strip clubs, gentlemen's clubs, OnlyFans, all this other stuff like this. So I want you to use your, your excellent reasoning. Would it not be reasoning that if I work at a strip club and I'm working till two, three, four in the morning and sometime doing the VIP thing and the closed uh, door event, I'm going to be up, the, up all night and then I have to sleep during the day? I mean, yeah, I get it. You know, and, and, and I think a lot of our young females, that's where that shift comes in, where they're sleeping later in the day. So just I, like vampires, they, mm -hmm. they have to wait until the evening time comes before they go out. I mean, I hear that, but I don't think that's a lot of women who are doing yeah. that. I just think that we have gotten away from routine and traditions and standards. And I'm speaking for the women. I'm not speaking about all black women. I'm just right. since we're yeah. having this conversation about the senator who thought it was a good idea mm -hmm. to do what she did. We've just gotten away from those things. And then as some black women, they buck the system. When I say the system, yeah. the system of decency, right? Like when Monique uh, asked black women to stop going to the airport in bonnets and pajamas and house shoes, you would have thought she said, kill your firstborn child or right, something. Right, Th throw they your firstborn like, child in the river, right. Yeah, they were upset. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what did she say? That and she said wrong. it in love. That, that's what's really sad. She said it in love where it isn't like offensive and people still came for her head. Uh, yeah, people, you know, was doing it out of protest. I'm aware of Bonnie. And I'm like, well, I'm glad she said it because, you know, I fly and every time I fly, I see sisters in bonnets and I get it. Uh, what, airline do you, what airline do you, do you fly, by the way? Spirit. <laughs> there you and go. I got no problem with them, but you know, I've seen them on other airlines as well. But it's yeah. more so on spirit. I'm gonna right, keep it right. real. More so on spirit. Uh, but you know, remember back in the day, Donovan, when we were young, and our mothers would travel with us. I don't care if it was to the store. You had to get in your Sunday with. suit. We was clean. Mm -hmm. We looked presentable. Our mamas was presentable, yep. and I think mean, we could have just been going to the store. Right, but we right. all went together, looking uniform and and clean and mm -hmm. all of that. But I mean, and I could never imagine my grandmother or my mama saying, "Well, you know, I'm about to trek across the country. Let me go on and get on my bonnet and my house shoes, and you know, and and and, and slosh across the airport, and you know, right. like they would they would be dressed." Right, right. But Demetra, what do real men, real black men have been saying to, to black women for years? We don't like the eyelashes. We don't like the weaves. We don't like this. We don't like it. You know, and, and we're telling you that right now. Now, for me, the reason why one of the main reasons why I don't like it is the mere fact that I want to see who you are in your natural state. You know what I mean? I, I want to see who I'm going to be dealing with. You take all that shit off. It gives me a little advantage if I know it in advance what I'm dealing with. But, you know, and I understand women want to be independent and stuff, but there has to be a happy medium. I mean, I don't understand how you you could say no, 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 but then complain that there ain't no good men out here or men don't want you or you we don't want attractive. I mean, Demetra, you're, you're one of the very few women that I know that can rock a short hairstyle and get away with it. Not everybody can do it. You're one of the few women I know that don't kick, kick on all, all this makeup and stuff and looking like a... a uh, drag queen, you know what I mean? Because I mean, you know, and, and and ladies, you guys know, you know damn well you've heard these comments. Maybe not directed at you, but you've heard it in your little chat groups where guys are saying, "Well, that I don't know if that's a 
RuPaul or if it who it is. It's a little too much sometimes. But the point is, when we tell you guys this, you don't want to listen. And then you have the nerve to complain when you're not getting the results that you want to get or the man that you want to get. It just We've been saying it for years. Yeah. And I mean, and, you know, I, no shade to any woman who wants to wear makeup and all sure. that. I, as y'all can see, I wear eye makeup uh, and that's really about it. And lip gloss. Sometimes I know I, I wear red lipstick um, and I, these are braids, I guess you could call them. Uh, but I'm just one of those people. I like a fresh, clean look. Mm -hmm. I don't like wearing a bunch of makeup. I don't, I don't wear any face makeup at all because one thing I'm always sweating and stuff. So mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm, that's just me. I like the clean look. I don't like the long nails because um, the raptors. Well, to me, some of them are cute. They look nice, but it's a, a sanitary issue because yeah. if they're that long, you're probably not really cleaning them good. And then you want to go and cook, and and, and you, you want to wipe what? yourself. Can you imagine somebody with those nails needing some dough to bake you some cookies or? Well, or we, whatever. Well, we, we know we don't have to worry about that with the modern woman because they don't cook. So well. <laughs> But what if she did though, right? And she's manipulating them tacos, right? And she's putting the sprinkled taco cheese and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you stupid. And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, so to me, and you know, and I, I had a cosmetology license, so I know what I'm talking about to mm -hmm. some degree. Um, they're nice looking, but they're not clean. So I'm just saying, for me personally, I like the clean look. I like to dress clean. I like to, when I say clean, I don't like the whole bunch of busy stuff. You yeah, know, too I much, like right? to keep it simple. It's hot where you're at. It's hot where I'm at. All that stuff yeah. on you. And I look at these women. I mean, and ladies, okay, I'm just going to say this. And this has been my experience. And I'm not saying all women. It's hot out here right now. You don't think that wig stinks and we don't smell it? We smell it. We smell it. So stop. I got a baseball hat on right now. I sweat underneath this baseball hat. I mean, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Let's have a little common sense with all this stuff. You know what I mean? You got to, you know, just have some common sense. I mean, is it really worth your uh, health in a hot environment? And, okay. What I'm basically saying is this, because of the things that you ladies are doing to attract us, it's really not fun because I can't take you to the pool. Cause guess what? You don't want to get in the water and have fun. Cause you don't want your weed to get wet. You, your nails are raptored out. So you can't do certain, you can't play, frisbee or whatever you're playing it really limits what you can do and you know people want to go out and have a life and have fun and uh, our women not all you know they don't think about stuff like that it's it's really it, it's really sad when you really can't go out and have fun with uh and enjoy nature let's say you know well yeah i mean that's that's true i would say you know for black women uh we do spend money on our hair and stuff so we don't necessarily want to go deep dive in in a, a hairstyle that we paid, you know, quite a bit of money for. Sure. Um, and so, and I, again, I don't knock any woman uh, for wearing hair and nails and stuff because listen, I, you know, I, this is not my hair. I do have hair, it's not my hair, but being in Houston, I can't wear my hair, you know, mm -hmm. because, and I'm a natural, right? So mm -hmm. I have, I have an uh, options. I either go get me a perm, which are no chemicals are not good. So mm -hmm. I haven't had a perm and shit. I don't know. Years. Years. Yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. Um, so I know it's not good. Or I continue to rake my hair out because it shrivels up in this humidity. Or I just, you know, put some braids or whatever I need to do it. So this is convenient for me. So that's why I said I don't knock women for doing that because I get it. Our hair in our natural state, and it's, you know, I'm gonna play devil's advocate a little bit. Y'all men say y'all want a woman that's natural, but then y'all not always with those natural sisters. A lot of times, very true. Yeah, y'all with the women with that European look. She's got the yeah. weave and, you know, all the makeup and, you know, mm -hmm. all that other stuff. And so I hear what you're saying, but I see what y'all, who y'all rocking with. Y'all not mm -hmm. always rocking with a natural sister. I, I hear it all the time. Oh, I like your Afro. I love a sister with an Afro. But it's like, mm -hmm. the minute you see what it takes for me to maintain this Afro, you're going to be looking at a woman who ain't got to be doing all of that. Correct. Correct. Now, now we have a friend, uh, our friend uh, Cindy down in the Caribbean. Um, you know, she had some beautiful braids right when we met her and stuff like that. But I actually got to see her in a uh, her natural state. Hair ain't really long, whatever. But she's beautiful in her natural state, at least to me. So, uh, yeah. But, you know, I've seen her in her natural state. A lot of you brothers, like I said, I'm, I'm not knocking you guys. But these sisters spend a lot of money to attract you guys. And you guys, like you just said, go out of your way to go get somebody else who who uh, has that kind of stuff. It just doesn't, 
it doesn't jive correctly. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't, you know, and, and I think people are entitled to what they like. I'm not saying yeah. as a man, you shouldn't be with what you like, just like as a woman should be with what she likes. But I think we, we really should be honest. But I, I want to go back to the point as far as men saying that, you know, if they're telling a woman they like this, that, and the other, um, I would say to women, if a man is telling you that and you like him, then will you at least meet him halfway? Now, I get it. You ain't what you can't do a lot of times, and I, I, I'm not mad, is tell a black woman how to wear her hair. Because for y'all, and I think this is what y'all need to kind of concede this point. Y'all telling us, oh, I want to see you in your natural state. I want to see you with your natural hair. But natural, and I and I hate to say this, because I'm not saying that natural is not it is unnatural because natural grows out of our hair that way right absolutely mm -hmm. all of that but it does take a lot of maintenance to maintain that i mean it mm -hmm. does when you have natural hair and you're trying to maintain it and i'm trying to appease my man because he liked the afro my afro eventually is going to snap off because i have to keep manipulating it when you manipulate natural hair our hair is just naturally drier so there's a lot of things that we got to do with what, you ain't got the stay soft fro like after Soul Train commercial, the stay soft fro you would put in your hair and yeah, moisturize. You know, it, it, it's a process. And like I said, y'all see me with my, I haven't seen me in my app on a while, but it was just to a point to where I was like, I can't maintain this and not be bald after a yeah. while because, well, you know. Well, okay, well, 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 can I say this? Like you just said, be, meet you halfway, right? Fellas, mm -hmm. it's not enough to say, I want you to do all this. You got to meet them halfway. So if you want your woman to, to, to have that hairstyle, Give her the money to maintain the hairstyle that you want her to have. How about that? Oh, wait a minute now. You 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 treading in danger. I ain't gonna pay to have her hair done. She better go in the bathroom and get a pick and, and you know and, and pick it out or something. Then okay, I look, look. I used to have when my sons were little, their mom wanted to put their little, you know, put the barrettes in my son's hair. I said, F no, absolutely not. Oh, he looked cute. No, it ain't about looking cute, right? So, ladies. Fellas, if you're listening and watching this broadcast and you got a woman out there, you know, who has an expensive thing, but she's going to meet you halfway. Do what I do. Tell her to get one of these. Now, you know, damn well. If you <laughs> like a, a scully, you'd be like, ah, oh, nah, that's too masculine. I don't want no woman. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Some women, some, like I said, it's very few women that can rock short hair. It's, it's very few. Like I said, you're, you're one of the few that can rock short hair. I think almost women can rock short hair. I mean, no, no, not 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 when you you got no nick and you're 260 pounds and you're at five one. No, sorry, <laughs> that's just a fact. Sorry, that's but that's per your viewpoint. You don't prefer Correct. that. But there's some men who don't mind a woman being that big and having short hair and yeah, all that. If I've been in prison for the last 25 years, I don't give a damn who it is. You know what? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. You cutting up that right look now. On your face was priceless. It was you cutting up right now. I yeah, know. I, mean, so, I don't know. I just think, like I said, I'm sad that some things yeah. have become normal uh, in our community. Yeah. Um, as far as women are concerned, I don't think we should get in the habit of normalizing those things. It's not. It shouldn't be normal. I mean, I know things change, times change. Yeah, yeah but, but isn't it sad that our older women are not teaching the younger women that they are the first teachers and they're the pillar of the community? Our, our community will only go as far as what our women teach and portray within the community that's, that's acceptable. Let's just face it. And it's sad that it's not being taught. You got some moms that are thotting right there with the daughters. And it's so sad. And I blame that on our generation. Not so much our parents' generation, but more so our generation, because our generation, our parents took the kids. You go get your stuff together, girl. Go do what you got to do. Go, you know, get, get, you know, get off the drugs or whatever you're doing. And I'll take care of the kids. So I blame a lot of that on, on our generation, the fathers and the mothers, who now that this behavior has been normalized, you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I get it. But yeah. So it, to me, I like I said, I, I just, you know, think of my mom and my grandmother and the older women, mm -hmm. you know, and I just there's just I, I could never see them doing or behaving in that manner at all. And to me, that's who the standard was. The standard yeah, was yeah. those women. Who, who who has some sense, right? And who were respectable. 
Uh, but I think with what the, I don't know, maybe it's going to be normal. Uh, what a lot of these women don't understand is later on, you know, when you have kids like Amber Rose, right? Let's take Amber Rose. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a good, good. Yeah. Good, uh, get your hoe on. Get, get your, your hoe on. on. Get your hoe on. And the lyrics are pretty disgusting as usual. You and the video is pretty disgusting. Video is pretty disgusting. But she has sons. It's like, so what are they supposed to think when they see that? Is that supposed to be normal to them? Like, oh, mm -hmm. that's just my mom and she's a whore. You know, is that are they, is that how this is supposed to just be like normal? Is mm -hmm. that is that is I, you know, because I could never imagine being a child and then one day I'm on the internet and then I see my mother in that way. That well, was, think about you know, all these think about all these moms that have OnlyFans accounts and all this other stuff. I mean, the, the, the internet's forever. And they don't seem to, re to remember that the internet is forever. Right. So a lot of right. these women are, especially our age, are going to become grandmothers and stuff, or they're great grandmothers and a lot of, you know, in our situation. And, you know, here, here's your grandbaby, a uh, Googling one day, just doing a family a search or something for some reason, because it's a, a, a school assignment. And there's grandma busting it open right there on the, uh, on the internet. X videos. Wow. You know, <laughs> porn hub, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then as a mom, what do you say to your child, your grandchild? Well, baby, I was. It's sad. Those I mean, the, those, those were the days, you yeah, know. That's it, a good had. example, uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's daughter. Uh, I, I ran across an article of hers from years ago, and she's on Instagram and stuff like that. And she seems to be getting herself together and stuff. And I guess I hope her and her father reconciled and did, did what they had to do. But do you know, for everything that she did, she was only paid sixty thousand dollars. And who and was it? On, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's daughter, Montana Fishburne. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sixty thousand dollars for all that she did, the reputation and stuff like that for sixty thousand dollars. And the producers that worked with her in the adult industry, they're making millions off of that as it's, it's constantly being recycled and worked out and stuff. It's just sad. It's just a sad situation. Yeah, I mean, it's sad and, you know, but it sounds like she had a very tumultuous relationship with her father as a young yeah. child. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know what drove her to do that, but I just kind of think that Lawrence Fishburne, who is one of the greatest actors alive, greatest actor. your daughter's out there doing that kind of stuff. I don't know what happened, so I don't want to judge yeah. him, but I don't know. Just To me, it seems kind of weird and it, it doesn't seem like it's as cut and dry as people are making it seem like, oh, she just woke up one day and wanted to go... And do well, I, I, I saw a clip of her on CNN and she was saying that she wanted to do it for the simple fact that that's how Kim Kardashian started her career. You know, she thought it was going to do the same thing. But what's the one thing she forgot, though? Kim Kardashian ain't black. Yeah, I, I've never heard that. So I don't know. If she yeah, uh, Google it on a, a, a Montana Fishburne CNN interview. Wow, that that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I just think that we... Um, in our community, especially us as women, we need to, you know, as I always Let's say, hold the we, standard. Well, no, we, we just need to go still go back to uh, start teaching our girls how to be respectable young ladies. Now, I know somebody say, well, define re uh, respectable. You know what that is. You know what I mean? You know what it is to be respectable. Go out, you know, respectable to where people can say, hey, that's a, you know, nice young lady. Yeah. She's not um, causing question or shame onto herself or to her family name. Yeah. She's not having people, you know, question her morals and things like that, right? Because back in the day, I know they had bad girls per se, sure. but it was admirable to be a good girl. Like people, like when men, I, you know, I watch these older movies. Yeah, the pursuit stuff. of the good girl was, woo, that was an adventure. Yeah, you know, and, you know, talk to older men and they wanted the good girl. And they also mm -hmm. knew that. They couldn't just do anything with that good girl because that good girl had standards. You know, she knew where brothers, she was going. a father in her life. Her head was on tight. You know, and grandma she, had that switch on the porch. Yes, yeah, she. There, she just she she was not going for anything, right? And yeah. so men found her to be attractive, and so that's what women strive to be back then was the good girl. But yeah, now yeah. everybody wants to be. A bad bitch. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, the funny thing is like you go on the uh, dating apps and I, like, I read some profiles on the dating apps and the women are always saying, you don't want the guy with the guns showing in the picture. Or he's got the sunglasses or the wife beater on. They, you know, they go, we don't want guys like that. But yet you will see the same in the dating app, a girl going like this. 
you know. Right. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. Like you said, the bad girl image. Nobody's going to wife that up. Nobody wants to be with the chick that has that picture out there like that. Right. She's good to have fun with. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, we need to really just, you know, take it back and say there are some things that uh, we should not think as normal. And to me, right. this is not normal. The senator there in uh, Rhode Island thinking that's it's not normal. And I don't think we should even try to have the conversation around normalizing that. And, you know, to put it out there, if she's a Democratic woman. You know, and I know Republican women got their issues. You know, they they really do have their issues. But it's like, damn, out of all the issues y'all going to have, y'all going to keep twerking to the polls and strip clubbing to the polls and all that. Like, why? Like, you know, all the negative like, tropes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and then that's the stuff, as I say, they sell that to us as black women. Like, there's mm -hmm. so much more to black women as us being sex objects. We're smart. We're innovative. We're, you know, tender and you know, we, we, we're we like, we're good people, but you would never know it because all they throw before everybody is this thought, this, you know, 304, this lonely woman who can't control herself. She just got to, anytime she hears some songs, I mean, a song come on, she got to bend her butt over it. You know, like, I don't know if you saw Megan Thee Stallion on the internet a couple of days ago, you know, and I was like, that is so disgusting. Like, why are you doing that? That is gross. Yeah. Even as a crack fiend mama, you always was my black queen mama. Tupac's mom could be on crack and she still acted and he held her in reverence as a black queen. So it can be done, ladies. But before we get out of here and stuff like that, for the 4th of July just passed yesterday, Demetra, and across the nation, violence was the talk of the day. So I'm talking about not just in one incident, it was around the nation. What, what are your thoughts on uh, yesterday's festivities? Well, there's, there's so many of them, I'm still, you know, doing some research and trying to, you know, get uh, the details and stuff like that. But I mean, we always know that America does have a love affair with guns. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny because when we came on here, I was watching uh, Republicans uh, in Texas. They were arguing about the border. The Democrats wanted uh, built this tent outside of the southern border that welcomes in immigrants and stuff like that. And it's not right. And I'm thinking, y'all doing everything in y'all power to keep people out, which I do believe that they shouldn't come in here legally. But y'all keeping in the people who's really doing the damage. And that's these white supremacists that are running around killing people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right. like, y'all don't want to think y'all need to deal with that. First, like you, like the people inside of the borders of the United States mm -hmm. are targets in Chicago. You know, they were um, at a parade and the white boy, 21 years old, I forget his name because there's so many. These young people. white boys are going ham. Yeah, he shoots up a parade, killing what they said now is seven people, injuring seven many people more. Injured. And so it's like, y'all talking about these people coming over here, but you're not talking about the people already over here. That's a real threat to people. Right. And, and also uh, the young man, the body cam of the young man was released where he was shot at 90 times and he was hit 60. Um, the police in that incident went and guarded the mayor's house, the police chief's house and all this other stuff. Um, notice that Al Sharpton, this congressional black talkers, no statement came out and they kept Al Sharpton away and Roland Martin and all these uh, bowling ball Martin, all these people away because you know what? It ain't working no more. People are sick and tired. And this is what Demetra and I were saying and a lot of other new black media people were saying in regards to your Karen Basses, your uh, Sheila Jackson Lees and your Maxine Waters and your uh, Jimbo Clyburns. We can go on and on and on. When something happens to black people, they are silent. Kamala Harris, silent. But right. let it, something happen to a white person. Oh, white women's rights are on the thing. You know, we gotta vote, send $15. They're quick to speak on other people, but don't want to speak in, on our behalf. It's not working anymore, you guys. Uh, they've been exposed. The midterms are right around the corner. It's only a couple months away. We have to keep our necks on these public servants. What are your thoughts? I know. I, I totally, totally agree with you. We need to do that um, because things aren't getting better. But more importantly, we need to be careful who we vote for. We Absolutely. need to be, be careful. Uh, cause I, again, I was watching the news, which is something I rarely do. Mm -hmm. And in Philadelphia, uh, it was an all blacks, well, a mostly black city council. And they're talking about bringing in stop and frisk 
to quell the, uh, the gun violence that's going on because I guess a police officer was shot um, at, I guess a bullet grazed him yesterday at a parade or something. Mm -hmm. They don't know who did it. The person is still on the loose, but they're talking about bringing in stop and frisk. And I'm like, well, anybody who knows what stop and frisk is, that, would, that didn't um, affect everybody. That disproportionately affected black and brown men. So why would you want to make lives, the li um, lives harder, things harder for the lives of black people? That's a very austere law that specifically is, yeah, I know that it doesn't say that specifically yeah. aimed at black men, but that's who got it the most. And so this was an all black, but with the exception of one guy, city council saying that we need to bring in stop and frisk. I know people aren't going to like it, but we need to do that so that we can curtail the gun violence. But I was like, wow, it's funny how in all their planning that they want to do, they never mentioned how the guns got here. They never mentioned white supremacy not one time the nra and you know the republicans that are gun friendly mm -hmm. and you know second amendment rights and a lot of the democrats as well but yet you want to rest the uh all of that on the, the victims of right and, yeah exactly people who have no control of that you want to make them bear the brunt of that so you could say you did something wow. right exactly it, it, it's it's just a scary situation and as i feel uh there has been an open call to war on black people. That's why they're trying to incarcerate us and they're shooting us down uh, right in broad daylight. How can a man running away from you, eight police officers have been put on paid leave as they investigate the situation. The video makes it abundantly clear. The man is running away, gets gunned down, 60 bullets, kill him. Young white kid kills seven, wounds over 30. He gets taken into custody. Explain that. Well, I mean, you know what that is. You know, I personally wouldn't be surprised if those white supremacists that are doing the shooting are in cahoots with the white supremacists Correct. in the blue uniforms. You no, know, and I, you know, it's funny that it's funny that you brought that up because they said that they were aware of this recent young kid shooter, white kid shooter. The police, law enforcement, was aware of him, and they were aware of the one in Buffalo. In fact, their uh, Peyton Gendron was uh, communicating with law enforcement in Texas about what he was going to do, and so. They're aware. So, I mean, I don't think we should be surprised anymore. We can say, oh, my God, look how they brought him in. He's white. And they, what they doing to our people is like, why are you surprised? They are the same people. White people. supremacists people. stick together. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't doubt it. I'm going to just say allegedly because I don't have any hard facts mm -hmm. that, well, there are some facts out there that they are in cahoots and they are happy that they are doing what they are doing, they being a white supremacist to other people who are not like them. So I'm not surprised that they keep taking these white supremacists in unharmed. They're probably giving them a pat on the back. Good job. We yeah, don't, don't worry. We're going to get you off. We're going to get you attorneys yeah. and everything you need. Everything you need. Yeah, don't worry. You, you, you know, you'd escape those, but we're going to fight and figure out some loopholes and, you mm -hmm. know, all that other stuff. All right. And another question I have for you is um, women's rights is supposedly on the ballot, according to Nancy Pelosi. Right. The Democrats are, you know, oh, my gosh, we got to do something. Yet they have been doing nothing. Zero action has taken place. Now, here's my question to you. So they're rallying all these women to be Democrats and go vote. And, you know, because women's rights is on the back, according to Nancy Pelosi. Demetria, are you aware that Nancy Pelosi is a, a Catholic? Yeah. Are you aware that Joe Biden is a Catholic? Mm -hmm. Joe Biden is a, a, a he is a public statements of over 40 years where he's against yeah uh deletion and stuff like that nancy pelosi is putting on this cloak like she's for women's rights but yet she's a hardcore catholic uh member i'm a catholic member and abortion is against the catholic doctrine so do you really think that this administration nancy pelosi uh these people are really against women uh for women's rights um, I think they are for pandering for votes. Exactly. That's what it is. If they, if it was popular to set your mama on fire, they would say, we have to do it to preserve the rights of people who want to yeah. set their mama on fire. Yeah. So they're pandering. I mean, Ralph right. Warnock is a pastor. Yeah. He talked about he's a pro-choice pastor. Like No such man. thing. No such thing. And, and, and you know, and, uh, and when you put this to people like that, does this not basically expose the fact that these parties are the same people of course of course
So if you got 98% of black people saying, oh, the Democrats are the, you know, this, this, that, and the Republicans are evil, if they're working in cahoots together, it doesn't matter what side you vote on, you're voting for your own oppression, either way it goes. So it's, it's best just to just check out and just let it happen. Absolutely. I totally agree. So you guys, that is the end of our show. We thank y'all for staying here and hopefully y'all found this discussion enlightening and all of that. Yes, um, we need more we'll senators like that. <laughs> So we do have a cash app demo PayPal uh, to donate to the show. You can become a member and super chat and all of that. But again, at the very least, like this video and we will be back tomorrow with Wealth Wednesdays Wild and Out with Walter. And we have an interesting topic as well. I'm going to tell you what it is. I want you to stay tuned. It will be interesting as always. And so until then, we will see y'all later. Be safe out there and have a very great day. Peace. Peace.